Markiplier, also known as Mark Edward Fishbuck, is one of my absolute favorite YouTubers. Across a decade of making videos such as Let's Plays, Comedy Skits, Vlogs, and more, he has made thousands of YouTube videos. So, just how powerful is this lovable creator? That's what I want to find out. Mark has a lot of canon to work with, so to lay down some rules, I will be investigating the Adventures with Markiplier trilogy, including In Space with Markiplier, A Heist with Markiplier, and A Date with Markiplier. Other projects Mark has made and or appeared in, like the Random Encounters collabs and Unas Anas, along with the video games PewDiePie Legend of the Brofist and Critical Annihilation, to get an estimate for how powerful this gamer truly is. For general qualities, Mark obviously has above-average intellect, as he was studying to be an engineer, and in the Adventure series actually became the head engineer of the spaceship The Invincible 2, so he clearly knows more about technology than the average person. He also has above-average physicality, conditioning, and fighting skill, given his training in wrestling. He is also at least somewhat proficient in fight choreography, axe throwing, Chinese archery, and archery on horseback, making him a fairly well-rounded fighter. As a gamer, he is no stranger to coming up with strategies for different scenarios on the fly. Even if he tends to lose his cool sometimes, strategy is his key to victory. When it comes to physical strength and power, Adventure Mark is capable of dropping a zombie with a single strike and knocking out the captain, who can effortlessly carry, throw, and launch Mark a considerable distance with a single kick. At one point, Mark was casually able to throw people strong enough to break bones. Legend of the Brofist Mark is also insanely strong. Since all the characters are built similarly to each other to make the video game balanced, they can logically scale to each other. Mark, like the rest of the heroes, can crush barrels with a single stomp, even if they are made of metal. It is worth noting that barrels can break through walls just by hopping. The King of FNAF is also comparable to base form PewDiePie, who can kill a giant T-Rex in one hit with his weapons, defeat Falcon Lover in a brawl, and damage King Barrel even without using his legendary Brofist. King Barrel is capable of carrying millions of PewDiePie subscribers like they weigh like nothing in his mouth, and still be able to jump great heights. And both YouTubers gain more power with their abilities, which I will get to later. When it comes to reaction speed, this gamer is also impressive. Adventure Mark can outpace gunfire and is similar to the captain, who can dodge lasers from point-blank range. Legend of the Brofist Mark can pilot his fighter jet. And while reaction speed and movement speed are completely different, Mark can react fast enough to pilot this vehicle. According to executive flyers, fighter jets average a flight speed of 1,600 miles per hour, but at top speed, can reach 1,900 miles per hour. That's more than twice the speed of sound. Even better, Mark and the other heroes can react to energy blasts from metal barrels and dodge lasers, solidifying the reaction speed at relativistic speeds. When it comes to durability, Adventure Mark and Video Game Mark should be comparable to their own physical strength and power. During a panic-inducing emergency, he has also taken a beating from the captain, so fairly consistent. In a date with Markiplier, he can survive a multiple-story high fall to the ground on his face, then walk it off. He can also tank barrages of blaster fire point blank. Keep in mind, these lasers are capable of blasting through people effortlessly. But Mark not only survives them, but then also tanks freezing temperatures and the heat of a reactor shortly after. How is this man still alive? Engineer Mark surviving this reactor he built is out of this world, quite literally, as he built it to have the supposed energy output of a star. This would upgrade his durability to even greater levels. While this statement could be hyperbole, Mark also once got teleported into the quote-unquote center of a star then felt the skin slowly melt from his bones, rather than just dying immediately. These feats could upgrade his durability, but since he and the captain have canonically died from less powerful explosions and injuries, I feel like these are outliers. This proves Mark is in the superhuman levels of physicality. Here's more evidence. While he was fighting off a literal army of aliens and monsters, Critical Annihilation Mark was able to tank this small explosion without any damage whatsoever which is consistent with his other feats of superhuman toughness. When it comes to weapons and abilities, Mark has an amazing arsenal across different media he has appeared in. In his live-action appearances, Mark has wielded an automatic handgun, a submachine gun, a grappling gun, a machete, 
an assortment of knives, a flamethrower chainsaw that he stole from a serial killer, a medieval explosive, a flintlock pistol, a concealable rocket launcher, and a stealth bomb disguised as an arm. In the collaboration video game, Mark has shown a wide variety of abilities, including Pro 360 No Scope, wherein he summons a powerful 50 caliber sniper rifle for long range insta kills, an energy shield for additional defense, Stefano Scimitars, where he summons golden swords for both attack and defense, Pro Drone, where he calls upon the help of an energy orb shooting drone in combat, and his signature ability, the Pink Stash, wherein he summons Warp Stash wings for flight. He also has his fighter jet backup airplane, and his helicopter, both for combat and rescuing allies whenever needed. These are great, but Critical Annihilation is where Mark goes full-on John Wick mode with his arsenal to defend the Earth from aliens and monsters. His weapons include an automatic rifle for DPS and reliable range, a shotgun for additional stopping power, a plasma shield to defend against attacks, and a rocket launcher if he ever needs near-unbeatable firepower. But his greatest weapon is none other than his signature weapon, his marking gun, this rifle shoots pink wharf stashes at rapid fire speed, one-shotting zombies and monsters and allowing Mark to just vibe to EDM. With this, Mark can clear a horde chasing after him with relative ease. That's not all. In the lore of Unus Anus, a web series he and his friend Ethan made, Mark lives in a universe wherein he and his crew have to upload a YouTube video every day for an entire year. While most of their videos are for fun, some are death-defying to say the least. With each canonical death, Mark and Ethan can come back to life at least once per day until the clock strikes zero, wherein the universe they exist in is deleted as a whole and they can return to their actual home universes. And even with these canonical deaths, they just kept on living. But now we have to go to the dimensional theory of the adventure series. Diving into the cosmological nature of the story, I was fascinated. Since there are no official terms for these, I will have to come up with my own. To put it simply, there are three main dimensions where the stories we watch of Mark take place in, from my perspective and interpretation. First, there is what I like to call Dimension Tier 3. This is where the universe and multiverse for the adventure trilogy take place, such as in space with Markiplier, a heist with Markiplier, and a date with Markiplier. Other canons such as Five Nights at Freddy's The Musical, Resident Enos 1 and 2 take place here. Characters like Adventure Mark and The Captain live in this dimension of reality and have to live and die by the consequences of their actions. Thankfully, the story concludes with a good ending. Second is Dimension Tier 2, which is a higher dimension of existence compared to Dimension Tier 3. The stories that happen here include Markiplier TV, Who Killed Markiplier, and Wilfred Mother Loving Warfstash, the rivalry between characters like Actor Mark, Damien, or Darkiplier, and Wilfred Warfstash occur in this dimension. The narrator from In Space is also here, seen as one of the main writers for the events in that story. This is where things get meta. What is worth noting is that to the characters in Dimension Tier 2, the events of Dimension Tier 3 are completely fictional, so they exist beyond and are mostly unaffected by events that happen in the Adventure Trilogy. For example, in the Invincible 2 spaceship, the captain and adventure Mark, who experienced the story as real events, would see a giant ship in space, one that they have to work hard to take care of. On the other hand, actor Mark from Dimension Tier 2 would only see a movie set that he is paid to participate in. Additional evidence includes the narrator calling himself a quote-unquote higher dimensional being, and he can even manipulate the plot of Dimension Tier 3 itself multiple times. This will be important later. Finally, we have Dimension Tier 1, which is our real life, where Mark Edward Fishbach creates the story, and other videos on his YouTube channel like Let's Plays, Comedy Skits, Review Videos, Vlogs, etc. This is also where the Unas Ana storyline takes place, albeit separate from his channel. To discuss the importance of all this cosmological power scaling, I want to talk about the Warp Crystal and Heist Box. In In Space with Markiplier, the Warp Crystal helps the Captain to travel across the multiverse, in a heist with Markiplier, the Warp Crystal now powers the artifact that the Captain and Adventure Mark are after, which is the Heist Box. With this crystal, they gain cosmological powers that are second to none in the story. Mark has used this artifact for appearance alteration, like the time he came up with a disguise clever enough to trick and spy on trained agents sent to capture him. But it gets better. The Warp Crystal's other abilities include multiversal travel and time manipulation. As the wielder can slow down time, rewind time, stop time, and even resist time paradoxes. The artifact also has some level of spatial manipulation as it can fit objects larger than it inside the compartment. 
One of the more bizarre abilities is probability manipulation. The object inside can change depending on the circumstance that Mark and the captain find themselves in. The heist box can either contain a picnic basket, a temporal displacement device, a key that can unlock any keyhole in the world, a ferry, a map to treasure, an ancient salt shaker, a red button to activate an orbital laser bombardment homing beacon, or more. For defensive purposes, the box can also freeze an opponent in place if ever needed. Most impressively, the warp crystal has resistances to plot manipulation. Remember the narrator I talked about? A higher dimensional being capable of rewriting not just reality, but the plot itself by writing on his book. Even with his godly power, he struggled to defeat the captain by altering the story on the spot due to the warp crystal, which can be now found on the heist box. The narrator is a being that transcends the multiverse itself, at least from the perspective of the adventure trilogy. But the box could resist his power. But if we were to look at Mark at his absolute best, he also has near-instant self-resurrection through the wormhole by transferring his consciousness into a parallel universe version of himself, kind of like dreamwalking in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then the wormhole destroys whatever the previous universe he and the captain were just in. Now, I am not saying that the heist box can destroy a multiverse, but it can certainly resist a higher dimensional being's powers of plot manipulation, necessary to create a story where a universe-destroying wormhole is created. Even so, having the heist box is an impressive boost in power. Mark does have a few weaknesses though. He has standard human weaknesses just like everyone, but he is also quite stubborn. He is at times hesitant to take advice from more knowledgeable and experienced people, and sometimes refuses to own up to his faults. Also, while he is a clever strategist when the time comes for it, he can also throw caution to the wind if it means getting closer to a goal. I guess you really are as good as they say. But it doesn't matter how good you are. All of this shows just how hard of a worker and how determined Mark truly is. And it shows whichever dimensional peer you are looking at in the lore. Whether it is saving the multiverse in his adventures, enjoying his time playing a video game, or being a fun, compassionate friend in his vlogs. When it comes to physical stats and abilities, Markiplier is outstanding. However, the warp crystal from his heist box grants Markiplier a huge upgrade in power and a wider variety of broken abilities, making him a near-unbeatable demigod. Thank you so much for watching. This is a video that I wanted to do for many years now, but I wanted Mark to expand on the lore of his channel more. I have been a fan since 2014, making that more than 7 years and about a third of my life so far. I will cherish Mark as a person and as a character, and most of all, as an inspiration, forever. Now to the power scaling. This opens up a lot of possible matchups for Markiplier as a character. I know PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye are very high up in people's lists, but I feel that the connections are very limited. However, I think the best possible matchup for Mark is Alpha Waymond Wang from Everything Everywhere All at Once, another multiverse film that I love. Both are Asian sidekicks to heroes that end up saving the multiverse from a destructive circular force, the wormhole and the bagel respectively. Both have the ability to access the bodies and minds of their parallel universe selves and are trained in efficient combat disciplines. Both are known for fighting creatively, using various weapons to surprise everyone. Also in canon, they are in love with the protagonist they save the multiverse with. They are very likable and that matchup makes so much sense to me. Who knows, maybe that can be a sequel to this video. In conclusion, Mark Edward Fishbach is one of the most important content creators on YouTube, and he has forever left his mark on internet pop culture. As he is very influential and inspirational to me, I am very thankful to him. Power scaling aside, wherever his next adventure takes him, I will be watching with a smile on my face. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye